The Robert Bosch Corporation, an industry leader in automotive, power tool, car audio, and major appliance technology. Bosch, a new line of thinking from Europe. This major appliance training video will provide you with the expertise necessary to operate, diagnose, and repair the following dishwasher models. The number designated for appliance color is as follows. Two for white, four for almond, five for stainless, and six for black. To begin, we will demonstrate the operation of each dishwasher model series. The SHU 3 Series control panel consists of a timer knob, on-off button with LED indicator, and a three program selector featuring power scrub, regular wash, and rinse and hold. To operate a 3 series dishwasher, select the program, to press the on button illuminating the LED, then turn the timer knob to the start position. Please note, on all dishwasher models, if the door is open during mid-cycle, the on button must again be depressed to restart the program. The SHI or SHU 4 series control panel consists of an on off button, a 4 program selector featuring Power Scrub Plus, Scrub Wash, Regular Wash, Rinse and Hold, and three cycle progress LEDs. To operate a four series dishwasher, turn the unit on and select a program, illuminating that program's LED. As the program advances, the cycle progress LEDs will indicate the program's position within the cycle. To change the program of any electronic series unit, press the desired program button twice. To cancel the program on a four series unit, to press the Power Scrub Plus and regular wash buttons both in at the same time and hold until the clean LED illuminates. The SHU 5 Series control panel consists of an on off button, countdown display, delay start button, a 5 program selector featuring Power Scrub Plus, Scrub Wash, Regular Wash, Delicate Econo, Rinse and Hold, and a Refill Rinse Agent LED. To operate a 5 series dishwasher, turn the unit on and select a program, illuminating that program's LED. As the program advances, the countdown display indicates the approximate time remaining in the program. At the end of the cycle, the display will read CL, indicating the cycle is complete and the dish is clean. To operate the delay start feature, turn the unit on and depress the delay start button. The delay can be advanced from 1 to 9 hours the unit will start automatically once the delay time has elapsed. To cancel the program of a 5 series unit, to press the scrub wash and delicate econo buttons both in at the same time and hold until the CL appears in the display window. The SHI or SHU 6 series control panel consists of an on off button, countdown display, delay start button, top rack wash button, a 6 program selector featuring Power Scrub Plus, Scrub Wash, Regular Wash, Delicate Econo, Quick Wash, Rinse and Hold, and a Refill Rinse Agent LED. The operation of the SHI or SHU 6 Series dishwasher is identical to that of the SHU 5 Series, which was previously demonstrated. However, the 6 Series has a Quick Wash program and a Top Rack Wash feature. Rack configurations for individual models can vary. However, each rack is constructed from a steel wire grid with a gray nylon outer covering. Rack rollers for both the upper and lower racks are a press fit design, making for easy removal and replacement. To adjust the height of the upper rack or to remove the rack from the unit, fully extend the rack, then lift up on the rack until the front, then rear wheel sets disengage from the rail. Attached to the upper rack is the upper spray arm assembly. The upper spray arm assembly can be removed from the rack by disengaging the rear tension clip to remove the upper spray arm from the assembly disengage the arm nut by turning it counterclockwise and then separate the two components. With the exception of the rack system, all dishwasher models covered in this training video have identical interior features. Those features are model and serial number tag, upper rack rails and guide rollers, filter basket assembly and filter screen, lower spray arm and feeder tube, strike plate, door gasket, 
and dispenser housing. Located on the right-hand side of the inner door is the model and serial number tag. The model and serial numbers are located on the tag within the black box. The model number for this unit is with a serial number of The upper rack rails can be removed from the unit by disengaging the rear end cap. To remove the end cap, apply outward pressure to the cap's top tab on clipping the cap from the rail. Now, slide the rail out from the upper rack guide rollers. The upper rack guide rollers are permanently attached to the tank and cannot be removed or repaired. To remove the filters, first turn the filter basket 90 degrees counterclockwise, then lift it out. The filter basket is a two-piece assembly that may be separated for cleaning. With the filter basket assembly removed, the filter screen can then be lifted out. Located under the filter screen is the sump area. The sump has a drain pump intake on the left and a circulation pump intake on the right. The drain pump intake has a cover that can be removed to inspect or clean the drain pump impeller. To remove the cover, unscrew the single screw, then lift the cover off to reveal the impeller. The lower spray arm is press fit into the feeder tube socket. To remove the arm, grasp the arm hub and pull up until the arm disengages from the socket. The feeder tube assembly allows water to flow from the circulation pump to the lower, then upper spray arms, and then to the top sprayer head. Having first removed both filters, the feeder tube assembly can now be removed. The feeder tube is removed as one complete assembly by first removing the two screws located at its base. Then, by prying open the retaining clips and disengaging the tube from the back wall mounting plate. The strike plate is factory set and cannot be adjusted. However, a new adjustable strike plate is currently being developed. The door gasket is press fit into a channel molded around the tank. To remove the gasket, simply pull it away from the tank channel. To replace, press the rib end firmly into the channel until secure. It is important to leave approximately two inches of extra gasket along the bottom of the tank for a proper seal. The dispenser housing is one assembly containing three individual components, rinse aid dispenser, soap dispenser, and steam vent. To fill or adjust the rinse aid dispenser, open the rinse aid door by pulling up on the door latch. The dosage meter is now visible. The dosage meter allows you to adjust the amount of rinse aid dispensed into the unit during the rinse cycle. There is also an eyepiece that provides a visual indication as to the amount of rinse aid remaining in the dispenser. Please note, for satisfactory drying results, rinse aid must be used. To the right of the rinse aid dispenser is the detergent dispenser. Once the detergent has been loaded into the dispenser, slide the dispenser door closed and then lock it by pressing down on the door end. A white locking lever will extend when the door is locked. If necessary, the detergent door can be manually released by pressing in on the white locking lever. With the detergent door closed, the steam vent is now visible. During the dry cycle, the steam vent allows steam to escape the interior and be collected in a condensation tube. Please note, the operation of the vent system and the removal of the dispenser will be demonstrated later in this video. In the interest of time, from this point on, we will only be demonstrating the technical features of the SHU 6 series dishwasher. However, the many technical similarities between the SHU-6 and the other dishwasher models highlighted in this video will enable you to diagnose and repair all models in the SHI and SHU series. To remove the outer door, you must first remove the six screws located on the inner door. Remember to support the door panel as you remove the screws. Now, with the screws removed and the door in the closed position, bring the bottom of the outer door panel out toward you, then slide the top down and out from under the control panel. As the outer door panel is being removed, the left or right door guards may shift or fall out of place. To reposition them, simply slide them back in over the hinge. Remember, the door guards must be in place before reinstalling the door panel. Please note, door guards are not used on the SHI model dishwashers. Located on the inner door is the steam vent tube and dispenser assembly. During the dry cycle, steam is drawn into the vent tube where it recondenses and the resulting water then drains out from the tube. The vent tube is press fit along the right side of the door with the gasket where the tube meets the dispenser. To remove the tube, clip the wire harness wire tie and peel back the plastic shield. Disengage the vent tube from the door by pulling it toward you, then slide the tube out from the dispenser. 
The dispenser assembly can be broken down into four main components. Reed switch, actuator, actuator arms with springs, and the dispenser housing. When the dispenser requires rinse aid, a magnetic float will draw the reed switch contacts together, completing the circuit and illuminating the refill rinse aid LED. To remove the reed switch, first disconnect the wiring connector. Now, while pushing it on the small locking tab, remove the reed switch with the needle nose pliers. To reinstall, slide the switch back into position until it locks and replace the wiring connector. The dispenser actuator will energize and reset twice during a cycle. Energizing first to open the soap door, then energizing a second time to dispense rinse agent. To remove the actuator, disconnect the wiring connector. Now using a small screwdriver, release the locking tab and pry the actuator out from its housing. To reinstall, slide it back into place and replace the wiring connector. Actuator arms can be removed and replaced separately, or the complete dispenser assembly can be replaced. To remove the dispenser assembly, first remove the upper rack, dispenser wiring, and vent tube. Next, using a broad-tipped regular screwdriver, spread the top and bottom metal positioning strips away from the dispenser. Then apply light pressure to the dispenser and break the seal between it and the door. Before reinstalling the new dispenser, bend the positioning strips back into place, straightening them if necessary. Now insert the new dispenser, making sure the positioning strips fit snugly against the dispenser body. The dispenser gasket will make a watertight seal, so no sealant is required. With the new dispenser assembly in place, reinstall the vent tube, dispenser wiring, and upper rack. The control panel can be removed from the dishwasher as a complete assembly, but in order to do so, the outer door must first be removed. Please remember, you cannot remove the control panel without first removing the outer door. Now with the outer door removed, remove the six remaining control panel screws from the inner door. With the screws removed, bring the control panel assembly down, turning it over to reveal the component wiring. Make sure to cradle the console so as not to scratch it. Now remove each wiring connector. Remove the connectors by pressing in on the connector tab and then sliding each connector off the board. Now that the console has been removed from the unit, it can be separated into two assemblies. First remove the two retaining clips located one in each corner. Now undo the two outer and two inner console locking tabs. Then separate the console frame from the console. The console face has an on-off button which can be removed by pressing down on the two retaining tabs and then sliding the button up and out. The selector buttons are removed by lifting them up and then off their mounting pivot. The console frame houses three components, the control unit, door latch mechanism, and on-off switch. To remove the control unit, press in on the three positioning tabs and bring the control unit down and out from the frame. Please note, after you install the new control unit and power has been restored to the dishwasher, the control unit must be reset by pressing the two appropriate program cancellation buttons. To remove the door latch mechanism, pry the two metal locking tabs up, then slide the door latch down. Now turn the frame over and remove the on-off button resetting lever. To remove the on-off switch, bend the single locking tab down, then slide the switch up and off then remove the on-off resetting lever. To reinstall the console assembly, combine the console and console frame and reattach the wiring connectors, which for ease of service have been notched and cannot be incorrectly inserted. Then install the complete assembly back onto the unit and secure. Remove the toe kick by removing the two screws that hold it in place. With the toe kick removed, you have access to the following components. Front leveling legs, water solenoid valve, rear leveling leg adjustment screw, electrical connection, circulation motor capacitor, and drain motor. The front leveling legs can be adjusted by inserting a regular tip screwdriver into the foot slot and turning the leg in the desired direction. To replace the water solenoid valve, first remove the two mounting screws. Now bring the valve out from the base and disconnect the water line and wiring leads. The rear leveling leg adjustment screw allows you to adjust the rear leveling leg from the front of the unit. 
turn the screw clockwise to extend the leg and counterclockwise to retract. Electrical connections are made wire to wire and held secure by wire nuts. For proper dishwasher operation, always make sure the polarity is correct. The start capacitor for the circulation motor can be removed from the front by loosening the 13 millimeter securing nut and then removing the two leads. To provide the required access for drain motor removal, always remove both the outer door and lower access panels. The lower access panel is held in place with two screws. Remove the two screws and wiring harness channel, then remove the panel. To remove the drain motor, first remove the sump fill hose by pulling it out from the sump and side tank connections. Next, disconnect the drain motor wiring. Remember, spade connectors have locking tabs that must be pushed in to release the spade from the terminal. Now to remove the motor, pull back on the plastic locking tab and turn the motor clockwise approximately a quarter turn. Then bring the motor out from the sump. Note the three positioning slots that lock the motor to the sump tabs. To replace the drain motor, insert the motor into the sump at approximately a two o'clock position. Some inward pressure will be needed to seat the seal as you lock the motor into place. Then turn the drain motor counterclockwise until the positioning slots lock back over the sump tabs and the plastic locking tab snaps back into position. Now replace the wiring and sump fill hose. From this point forward, all service procedures demonstrated in the remainder of this training video will require that the dishwasher be disconnected and removed from the cabinet for servicing. To remove the left side panel, first remove the two screws located on the top and bottom of the left trim strip. Then remove the trim strip by sliding it up and off the unit. The side panel is a press fit onto the top corner blocks of the dishwasher. To remove the side panel, gently lift up on the front corner of the panel, disengaging it from the front corner block. Then bring the panel's back corner off the rear block. Now bring the panel out from the unit about 45 degrees and then lift it out from the base lip. The components accessible from the left side are water inlet system, drain lines, inlet water line, water level housing assembly, water level micro switch, safety float micro switch, and aqua sensor. The water inlet system houses both the incoming water line and drain hoses. The right hand drain hose is the discharge line for the drain motor, which then continues on to the main drain hose that runs to the sink connection. To replace the main drain hose, remove the retaining clip and disengage the hose from the water inlet system. Now from the rear of the dishwasher, use a small tip regular screwdriver and press down on the top locking tab of the drain hose clamp and pry the clamp away from the base. Now remove the hose. To remove the water inlet system housing, unscrew the retaining screw and then slide the housing out from the base. To the right side of the water inlet system is the water level housing assembly. The water level housing assembly contains two micro switches. The upper micro switch is the water level switch and the lower is the safety float switch. The water level micro switch is activated via a pressure diaphragm that will expand and close the switch once the correct quantity of water has entered the dishwasher. To remove the water level switch, first remove the assembly cover by lifting it off the housing. Then remove the wiring connector. Now bend the plastic locking tab down and slide the micro switch with diaphragm assembly up and out from the housing. When replacing the micro switch assembly, always make sure it is locked into position and the wiring leads are placed back on the correct spade terminals. The lower switch is the safety float micro switch. The safety float micro switch protects against an overfill of incoming water or water leaking into the base. If the dishwasher were to fill with too much water, the safety float micro switch will close via a pressure diaphragm and activate the drain motor. If the base fills with water, a float in the base will rise up and close the micro switch via a push rod, again activating the drain motor. To remove the safety float micro switch, first remove the wiring connector and then bring the switch up and out from its housing. If you need to remove the complete water level housing assembly, First, remove the water inlet system, the two micro switch wiring connectors, and the sump fill hose. Now, using a small screwdriver, disengage the base locking clip and then slide the housing up and out from the base. 
With both the water inlet system and water level housing assembly removed, you now have clear access to the aqua sensor board. The aqua sensor board requires no service and will not have to be removed. For additional information concerning this component, contact your service representative. To remove the right side panel, follow the same steps that were previously demonstrated for removal of the left side panel. The following components are visible from the right side. Circulation motor, heater, wiring connectors, flow switch, and NTC thermistor. The circulation motor and heater assembly cannot be removed from the side, but are accessible for voltage or continuity testing. To replace either of these two components, the dishwasher base must be removed. Removal of the base will be demonstrated later in this video. To remove the wiring connectors, insert a small regular tip screwdriver along the connector side. Press in on the locking tab, moving that corner up. Now unlock the opposite corner and then slide the connector out from its housing. Located between the two heater terminals is the flow switch. In the event that water does not flow across the heating element, the flow switch will disable the element. To remove the flow switch, bring the bottom of the switch out from its base, unhook the side tabs, and then lift the switch out. Located on top of the heater assembly is the negative temperature coefficient device, also known as an NTC. The NTC uses a variable resistor to control wash and rinse water temperatures. Also combined within the NTC is a standard high limit safety thermostat set to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Removal of the NTC first begins by removing the lower spray arm, filter basket, and screen. Then by removing the two screws that attach the feeder tube to the sump along with the two sump clamps. Now, on the right hand side only, remove the three base mounting screws. Two screws in front and one in the rear. Next, Unhook the hinge pulley arm from the hinge by lifting it off. Lay the dishwasher on its left side, grasp the base and bring it away from the tank approximately three inches. Place a block between the tank and base, holding the base in this open position. Now reach in and grasp the sump assembly, moving it down and away from the tank, about one to two inches. The NTC is held in place with two locking tabs. Release the tabs and remove the NTC by pulling it out from the heater assembly. When inserting the NTC back into the heater assembly, make sure the gasket seats and the NTC is locked down under the tabs. Now remove the block and insert the base back onto the tank and reattach the pulley arm to the hinge. Then bring the dishwasher back to an upright position. Before installing the base mounting screws, check inside the dishwasher to make sure the sump gasket is in place and properly seated. Then replace the two sump clamps, feeder tube, filters, and spray arm. Then replace the three base mounting screws. To remove the base assembly from the tank, first remove both the left and right trim strips and side panels. Next, remove the four front and two rear base mounting screws. Now on both the left and right sides, Remove the hinge cover from the frame and unhook the hinge pulley arm from the hinge by lifting it off. Then remove the two wiring connectors. Now from the front of the unit remove the sump fill hose and the two drain motor wiring leads. Then slide the three electrical box wires out through the rear of the box and also remove the electrical box ground wire. Lay the dishwasher on its back being careful not to damage the drain hose. Then using a small screwdriver remove the door springs by prying the spring plate out from the base. Note the way the door spring cord attaches to the spring. Next, bring the base out and away from the tank and down about 45 degrees. Then remove the left and right hinge reels from the frame. To do so, turn the reel clockwise until the hinge reel tab lines up with the frame cutout. Then remove the reel. Now bring the base assembly completely down from the tank. With the base removed, you will have access to the following components. Circulation motor, actuator for top rack wash, and heater assembly. To remove the circulation motor and pump assembly, disconnect the four wire leads, then grasp the motor and turn clockwise a quarter turn until the motor stops. Now remove the motor from the front pump housing. The front pump housing will remain in place when the motor is removed. 
With the motor removed from the unit, separate the motor from the rear pump housing. To do so, first remove the impeller by placing a block in the rear of the motor and then turning the impeller counterclockwise. Now remove the rear pump housing. To remove, turn the housing clockwise and lift off. Located on the rear pump housing is the pump seal. The pump seal is a press fit and can be easily removed and then pressed back into place. With the motor and rear pump housing reassembled, you can replace the motor. To do so, first locate the key square on the front pump housing. This key square will insert into a notch on the rear pump housing. Line up the key square with the notch and then mate the two halves of the pump housings, pressing firmly to compress the seal. Make sure you support the sump as you apply pressure. Then turn the motor counterclockwise until secure. Now reattach the wiring leads. The lower actuator is used to control the top rack wash feature and is only available on the SHU 6 series dishwasher. To remove the actuator, remove the wire connector and then pry the actuator out from its housing. When replacing, make sure the actuator's arm is properly inserted back into the gate. To remove the heater assembly, first remove all wire leads and the two securing screws. Note that a washer is used on the right hand screw. Now release the single locking tab and while holding the tab open, bring the heater assembly up on the left side, disengaging the heater's two discharge outlets from the sump. Then bring the heater out from the circulation pump. The heater is a flow through design, taking water in from the circulation pump and then sending it out the two discharge outlets to the upper and then lower spray arms. To reinstall the heater assembly, slide the heater into the circulation pump first, then bring the heater down and seat the two outlet gaskets back into the sump. Make sure all three gaskets are secure and the locking tab is in place. Then replace the two screws and wiring connections. To reattach the base assembly to the tank, bring the base up and attach the left and right hinge reels. Insert the hinge reel key into the frame cutout and twist counterclockwise into position. Note that the hinge reel has a bumper that faces forward when the reel is replaced. Now bring the base into position and onto the frame, making sure the circulation motor, sump, and the sump drain hose seat properly back into the base. Attach the left and right hinge pulleys to the hinge arms and then slide both door springs back into place along the bottom of the base. With the dishwasher back in an upright position, insert the electrical lines back through the electrical box and attach the electrical box ground wire, drain motor wiring leads, and reinstall the sump fill hose. Then reinsert the two wiring connectors back into the base, install the right and left hinge covers, side panels, and trim strips. Now reinstall the two rear and the four front base mounting screws. The Robert Bosch Corporation would like to thank you for taking the time to view this training video. If you have any questions regarding the diagnosis or repair of any Bosch appliances, please contact your local Bosch representative or the Bosch Customer Service Department.